Well, hey there, YouTube, uh, again. Um, I apologise for uh, any slowness of speech or anything, but um, today I am in the grips of a uh, rather horrendous migraine that's hitting me down this side of the face. Um, I just wanted to uh, give you a little update on uh, what's happened since my video yesterday about the uh, corporate fraud that uh, YouTube enables um, placing claims on original content by the not copyright holder of said content. And I just thought I would um, just a little um, email exchange that I've had with the YouTube Partner Support Programme. So let's uh, just go over to the uh, the first one here. Um, last night, I sent them an email after um, counterclaiming, obviously, just to give them a little bit of additional information. Um, I have uh, redacted um, my email address, obviously. Um, and I've also redacted the uh, the name of the person that replied um, because it's not their fault. They are just following um, the procedure that uh, YouTube has prescribed for them to follow. Um, so anyway, yes, yeah, so here is my uh, initial email to YouTube Partner Support directly. Hi, just to get just to help you get to grips with the sort of fraudulent claims I'm talking about, here is a video I made on the subject using the current claim against my account as an example. And there is a link to the video that um, you would have seen yesterday. Just to be clear, every single claim made against my account in the time that I have been operating my channel has always been dropped following my counterclaim. That's true even though um, the, uh, the last one, the claimant, doubled down and I had to supply them with my contact details in order to pursue my counterclaim further, but even that was ultimately dropped. Um, every time I have had to make a counterclaim, I have had to check a box that states, quote, I believe this claim to have been made in good faith by the claimant, which invariably turns out to be initiated by YouTube's content matching algorithm operating on behalf of some corporation that seems to think it can claim revenue on my original works. At this point, after several years of this happening, I have zero belief that these are, in fact, claims made in good faith by you or the corporations you operate this automated service for. What sanctions do you make against these corporations, who incidentally might only be robbing me of a few cents each time, but when you multiply this by the number of fraudulent claims they make against other content creators, then this potentially amounts to significant revenue for them on material they do not own. My channel, in case you missed it in the original pro forma email, is, and I'll link to my channel, and the Bandcamp, Bandcamp page containing my published works is, and then there's a link to that, so that they can see for themselves um, that what was matched is actually my content which I have published in my own right. Is there any possibility of my channel being excluded from your content matching algorithms. I'm utterly sick and tired of this happening to me by this obviously faulty system. Apologies for any emotions displayed as a result of this issue, but I really am at the end of my tether with this happening on a frequent basis. Regards, me. Well, YouTube uh, sent back a little thing saying, um, we will respond to you within a business day. Well, this is their response. Hi, Brian. Thanks for writing in. A copyright owner claimed content 
in your video using YouTube's Content ID system. It appears you have already disputed the claim. The claimant has 30 days to review your dispute. In other words, someone's made a claim on your content. We've given them 30 days control over your content whilst your dispute is being processed by the claimant. You can find specifics of the policy applied to your video in the copyright notice section of your YouTube account. Yeah, I know, I showed it in the video yesterday. Once there, click on the underlined link to the right of the video's edit menu to learn more about the claim. In essence, that just says your claim is being disputed. Uh, the um, claiming party has got 30 days, yada, yada, yada. So effectively, they've just restated what I can see if I click that link anyway. If the policy that the claimant has set with their claim is to block or track your video, this policy will be temporarily lifted until your dispute is resolved. During this time, your video will not be monetized. Well, that, if you remember yesterday's video, is not actually what's going on, so this is a lie. Um, the video is being monetized, and they claim that those monies will be released either to me or the claimant at the end of the dispute period. If you were previously monetizing your video, you may want to learn more about monetization during a content ID dispute. In the meantime, you may resolve the issue directly with the claimant at disputes at adrev.net as YouTube does not mediate copyright disputes. Uh, I'm not asking them to mediate the dispute, I'm asking them what plans they have, what provisions they have to protect copyright, fraudulent copyright claims against original content by corporations? This question has not been answered. And you'll notice the disputes at adrev.net. Adrev.net, uh, adrev, ad revenue, um, that would be Google's own ad revenue sharing. Um, so, yeah, um, passing the buck to another department connected to YouTube that actually handles advertising revenue. Regards, and then the person who actually typed this out. Um, so, uh, I have written back to them today with the following. Again, redacted, because uh, you don't need to know that. And it, as I said, it's not that person's fault directly. Hi, that person. I know all these things that you state in your reply to my complaint. I know that somebody has made a claim against my content. I know they have 30 days to review my dispute of their claim. I know that I can find details of this dispute in the copyright notices section of my account. I know that the claimant has the power to block, remove or otherwise affect my channel. I also know that you are, in fact, monetizing said video during the dispute, it says so on the page. And I also know that I am but an ineffective pawn at the mercy of the claimant. They have as much said as much. I also know that I am the copyright holder of this content, and that the corporation concerned is fraudulently claiming my content as their own, as have many others before them. One other thing I know, as is becoming self-evident, is that you really don't care about the actual rights of the actual copyright holder, just the rights of the corporation fraudulently claiming said content as theirs. That is evident in the way that they effectively turn over control of your content to the mercy of the claimant. Ultimately, as I know all these things, the claimant will, in fact, release their claim against my content once the prescribed 30 days is up. They always do. 
except for that one time they doubled down and then when they realized I was going to go all the way, they backed off. The reason for my writing to you, if you had bothered to actually read the complaint, is that I'm sick and tired of corporations fraudulently claiming against my material and would like you to advise on what procedures you have in place to actually protect original content creators from such persistent fraudulent claims and abuse of your content matching system by these companies. What I am also starting to know is that YouTube ultimately doesn't actually care about protecting original content, only protecting the rights of corporations who claim said content as their own. If it were otherwise, then you would actually bother to read and understand the complaint before sending out a pro forma letter to an original content creator telling them that their content will survive or fall at the whim of the fraudulent company claiming the creator's property as their own. No wonder so many creators are leaving the platform in droves. And this is an issue aside from the adpocalypse, which is also uh, causing people to leave this platform in droves. I, however, will not just sit back and take it anymore. And the instant one of your fraudulent partners doesn't release my material from their claims and tries to pull me into court, that will be the day that you also find yourself in court alongside them, answering charges of enabling fraud on your systems by these companies, especially as you seem to take it as read that the company making the claim is automatically the rightful owner on the basis of little more than they claim to be. Beyond this, I shall pursue whatever action against YouTube that I am able until such time as you do, in fact, start to protect original creators from fraudulent claims by corporate entities, or any other entity for that matter. If you watched the video I linked in my last correspondence, you would have seen just how obviously not their material is involved here. And yet you still take their side in the first instance, passing off your algorithm as being their claim against my material, despite the obvious failings of that algorithm and the fact that you, not they, applied the claim on their behalf. I've worked in the IT industry for over 20 years. I know when I am being spun a story concerning a faulty algorithm. The question here is not how does your system work, to which your email provides an answer. It is what are you doing or going to do about fraudulent claims by corporations against original content? It seems that your answer here is Nothing. This is how the system works. You will be held to ransom on your content until such time as the fraudster decides to release it back to you. Not only is this illegal, but it also is, it is also immoral, unethical, and sets you up as a willing accomplice to this fraud by your corporate affiliates or partners. I will be taking this further as my copyright is inherently protected by law and you are in clear breach of that law by enabling fraudulent claims against original works by creators you deem small enough to ride roughshod over. On the basis, the claimant provides you with sufficient income to allow them preferential treatment by your automated systems. I offer you another chance to take this matter up with me to discuss how you, the platform hosting my original content, music, which I use as backdrop to my videos, expressly to avoid copyright claims of this nature, intend to protect said content from fraudulent use, just as you would your corporate partners. Regards, as always, me. Now, I sent that this morning, um, and there we go, let's go back up to there. Uh, I sent that this morning, and uh, obviously 
Um, I am waiting on their response to that. But I would urge every single one of you that has had fraudulent claims against your original content, specifically and particularly music, to um, basically not take it anymore, to stand up to this. If the big companies are prepared to utterly obliterate somebody who uses, as um, I learned in uh, the comment section of my last video, an Atari sound, you know, just one sound effect, all right, which in context may or may not be appropriate, but if they are willing to protect that to the point of destroying channels that have been built up over years, then they should also be providing the same sanctions against fraudulent claims by corporate entities or other entities on materials that they do not own. And I would urge you to take this very, very seriously and to stand up for it because this has gone on far for long enough. I'm going, this is a long video. I'm going to, it's longer than it needs to be, but uh, this is by means of me documenting my own um, experiences in this regard. And uh, I invite everybody to stand with me. If you have had your original content fraudulently claimed against, and I do mean fraudulently claimed against, I'm not talking about this new clause they've added, I bought the CD, therefore I can use it. No, that new thing that they've added to the counterclaim, I don't know if you've seen it, but yeah, if you've seen it, they've now added this, uh, I own the CD, or I have bought the song, therefore I'm entitled to use it in my videos. Sorry, that's not actually the case. Just because you buy a song does not give you the right to duplicate it in any media. That is blatantly false, and it is against copyright law. Um, so if you have been fraudulently claimed against by these corporations, I invite you to make your own video to stand up, because if necessary, I am prepared to take a class action suit with everybody standing next to me, yeah, that this has happened to, and we will make YouTube protect our content just as they enable corporations to protect theirs. Um, <coughs> intellectual properties are inherently owned by the creator of those properties. They are not subject to, well, I'm bigger than you are. I can afford the lawyers that you can't. Yeah? Just because you're a corporation does not give you an inherent right to claim monies that are not yours. It's as simple as that. And my head is throbbing. I'm going to call that a day before I start rambling and ranting any further than I have already. Have a good day. And... Uh, Take it easy, everybody.